Hello and welcome to the second in the series of my APM videos. In this video we're going to talk about the power system and we're going to talk about motors, how to connect them, calibrate the ESCs and then double check that the rotation on all of the props is in the right way. So the first thing we'll talk about is the power system. Now just be aware on here, you'll probably notice that this APM, this is actually version 2.6 of the APM and you can tell that because coming out of the um, GPS unit, there's a connection to the GPS and also a connection to the ITC port. That's the connection for the external compass. You'll notice it's mounted on an anti-vibration mounting. As of 2.9 of the code and later for APM, you should always make sure that you're mounting it on some form of anti-vibration mount. Okay, now we've got that out of the way, let's talk about power. It's worthwhile just showing you this diagram from the website. Um, you can see here that actually there are two positive lines. One runs through the outputs and then there's another one that runs all the way around the rest of the board or across the inputs and across the analog um, section as well. And that's connected to the other by a little jumper, a little diode and a 500 milliamp fuse. Now in normal operation, what you would do is you would power and supply the five volts and two amps that's needed to run the device through the outputs using the battery eliminator circuit that's part of the speed controller. And you would have jumper one installed and that would then power the inputs, which is where the receiver is plugged in. Be careful because if you're going to plug into servos, so for example, if you have a tricopter, you plug the servo into pin seven that controls the tail, you need to make sure that you have enough that you can supply the two amps that the APM will need and any additional current that that servo will need. If you're not sure that the ESCs have enough current to supply the um, five volts, two amps plus that you need, what you can do is you can use a UBEC. Now this is a three amp one. And um, what you can do here is rather than use the power coming off the ESCs, you can disconnect all of the red wires and you can install this into one of the spare channels in the outputs and that will supply the power for the entire board. A couple of things to be aware of. Um, if this isn't making sense, then watch my other video, RC Power Systems, that go into this in far more detail. But obviously, if it's, if it's a linear battery eliminator circuit in the ESCs that you have, then you just plug it in like we have here. All the red wires go in together. Linears are quite happy to be plugged in side by side. If it's something called a switched mode battery eliminator circuit, then you have to disconnect all but one of the red wires. And if it's an Optio, ESC, then that means that it doesn't supply five volts at all through the red wires, but it probably expects to see plus five volts on the red wire for it to initialize. So you'll absolutely need to plug in, if you have a Optio ESC set up, a UBEC alongside them to provide that five volts. If you're using a power module for APM, which can do a couple of things, that plugs into this port here, by the side of the I2C where the compass is, and that can supply power to both sides. Um, the only thing I would say here, and the thing that's caught me out before, is the USB port is here, and if you don't have jumper one installed, the model will fire up and the USB will supply the power to the board, and also power the receiver through these cables and it'll appear fine. And then when you try and fly it for real and you first plug it in, the board won't power on. And that's because the power that comes in on these leads from the speed controllers, because jumper one isn't installed, isn't flowing around the rest of the board and powering everything up. So hopefully that makes sense. Now we've talked about how we're gonna connect and power the board, what we'll do is we'll actually jump into talking around how we do the motor connections. So here we are looking at my part built hexcopter. We have the main power system on the bottom board and we also have the arms here with the ESCs installed and the motors. And um, one of the things you have to be careful of here is that you don't 
mix two of the connections here when you plug them into the APM or you'll get some pretty dramatic expensive results um, particularly when you're talking about a um, quadcopter if you mix any of these two wires up what will happen is it'll start to hover and as soon as it has to start the correction it'll then dramatically flip 180 degrees and land upside down in the grass and um, if you're having that happen to you and you can't figure out what's going on pretty much check the uh, the connections are the right way round. And at the end of this section, we'll actually show you a neat trick to do that without having to uh, test the model and fly it. So the first thing we'll do here, just to make sure that we're clear about how we're going to connect the motors up, is we can jump to copter.ardupilot.com slash wiki slash connecting your RC inputs and motors. And here are all the connections. You can scroll up and down, but we're looking here for the one we're interested in, which is the hex plus and you can see that the numbers don't go round clockwise so motor one is the one at the front motor two is the one at the back and then you can follow it round and each of the numbers of the motors correspond to the output pin that you want to connect it into other thing to notice on here is that the green circles on this diagram are the clockwise rotation propellers and the blue ones are the counter clockwise rotation propellers so while you're building it, one of the easiest things to do is to actually make a note of the, the, um, each of these connections and with the model in front of you laid out to match the diagram, write on each of the arms the number that corresponds with the number on the diagram. So the front one will be two, the back one, uh, sorry, the front one will be one, the back one will be two, the back left will be three. So here's one with three written on and also write the same number on the servo connection as well. Some people use um, silver pens, I like to use black, so when it's all installed you can't see all of that mess. The other thing I do is actually um, put, using one of these wonderful pens, uh, the Sharpie permanent marker, is just put a number of dots up the, the, the light signal cable, which is the one you can see when it's installed on the board. One dot for one, two dots for two, etc., etc. And that also is a very quick, easy visual way for me to confirm that it's all plugged in in the right way, rather than have to unplug each of those servo leads. Sounds like it's overly complicated and it's making hard work of something that's dead simple and you're never gonna have that problem, but trust me, it's easy to make the mistake when you're concentrating and doing other things. And I've done it once or twice and paid the price. So once we've got all this cabled up, we can then plug the leads into the corresponding outputs. So one plugs into one, two plugs into two and so forth. And then we're ready to power the model up. And what we'll do next is we'll go outside because I'm going to do this on the hexcopter and I need enough room to show you this thing to do the ESC calibration and then finally show you the motor test. So here we are in the sunshine and uh, you can see the hex in front of us here. What I've done is installed a little bit of white tape onto the top of each motor so that we can see when they're spinning and also that the direction they're spinning because part of this test is not only to make sure that everything starts at the same time because the ESCs are calibrated but also to make sure that the ones that should be turning clockwise are and the ones that should be turning anti-clockwise are as well and those are referring back to those uh, direction arrows when we looked at the motor connections. So the next part of the video what we'll do is we'll calibrate the ESCs and there's actually two ways that we can do this. There's an all at once method and there is a um, one by one method. Now the all at once method is pretty straightforward. You turn on your transmitter, put the throttle stick at maximum, you then connect the LiPo battery, let the APM power up, the lights will flash in sequence and then what you do is then you unplug the battery and then you re-plug it in immediately, then the APM starts in uh, ESC calibration mode, you wait for the confirmation beeps on the motors, then you put the throttle stick down and you're good to go. I actually had a problem doing it this way, um, just because one of the ESCs was having a real problem, so I did it in this manual ESC by ESC calibration routine. And in this routine, what's actually happening here is we're going to one by one connect to each of the ESCs. And what I'll show you very shortly is I've actually um, connected 
the throttle cable directly to each of them and the process we're going to go through is very similar to the all at once but we're doing them one by one in that you put the throttle to the top you then uh, connect the ESC to the throttle channel directly on the receiver power everything up wait for the confirmation beeps on that ESC reduce the throttle on the transmitter wait for the long beep and then um, the couple of beeps to confirm it's calibrated and then in theory you should be able to lift the throttle very slightly and the motor will start to run at that point that's that ESC calibrated you unplug it and then you can move on so what I've done is I've unplugged the throttle connector from the receiver and I've put a little extension cable on just so I can plug each of the motors in turn I've unplugged all six of the motor connections from the APM and what I'm going to do one by one is connect them directly through the throttle channel to start um, to put the transmitter into the high position, power on the model, wait to hear that beep, single beep from the ESC, and then reduce the throttle back to zero and wait to hear the double beep for confirmation. And then give the throttle a little bit of a bump just to make sure the motor starts nice and smoothly. And I'm going to go through each of them one by one. And this is where it's very handy having the numbers written on because you can make sure that you keep on track and you can start with number six, then go do number five, four, three, two, one. And you've then done all of them and they are identically calibrated. And then as a final step, what you can do is plug them all back together, reinitialize the model, and then just bring up the throttle very slightly and make sure that all the motors start running an identical time. If they do, like we can see here, then we know the ESCs are calibrated and we're all in good shape. So now we have the motors installed and the ESCs are there and uh, we've kind of made sure that each of the motors is running at the same time. The last thing you can do as a belt and braces test to just double check that your motors are installed the right way is in Mission Planner. So here we are back on the netbook and what we're going to go into is Terminal. Now if Terminal doesn't appear on this top row of icons then what you can go is into Config Tuning, go to the bottom Planner and tick the advanced view box and the advanced view will actually give you the terminal tab. Now the terminal tab when we go in here we'll just click connect will give us a command line interface up into the APM and once the port is open we'll get a prompt with the version of the APM code that it's working. Here we go and in here what you type is you type test and hit enter and then you type motors and then hit enter and what will happen is each of the motors will run in turn in a clockwise direction starting typically with the one at the very front and what you're looking for here is to make sure that each of them follow in turn uh, they run for a, about a second at very low power and it's just confirmation that you've got them in the right order I used this a while ago to spot that I had two of the connections crossed over when I built my H-copter for the first time and uh, it was only this really that helped me figure out what the heck was going on so in this video now we've watched the board go from a board that was programmed to having the motors installed to having power applied through the ESCs to being installed onto the quadcopter I think it's only right that we now take this hexcopter outside put it on the grass in the back garden and see if it works so the answer is very much yes it does now the real fun starts we can trim and refine this quadcopter uh, this hexcopter so it flies perfectly and things like the gimbal return to home and all of the additional special parameters are all set up perfectly. Thank you for watching, I hope that's been useful. Keep your eyes open for the third in the series where we'll go into more detail. Like, subscribe and happy flying.